Hey, welcome back again, everyone. I uh, figured I'd uh, do another video update here on all my modifications and uh, tips and tweaks that I've been doing to my uh, Auto Breach Lock Pro press here. Uh, as you can see, my powder measure is uh, dismantled right now. I was taking some photos for, uh, for documentation for some of the issues that I ran into uh, recently with it. Uh, not necessarily with the powder measure itself, but with uh, the variable charge bar uh, that uh, I had been meaning to pick up um, just for the adjustable accuracy because the uh, discs uh, just weren't cutting it. Um, but I will get into that here in a little bit. Um, first thing uh, I want to get into is uh, actually not press related, but um, powder scales. Um, digital powder scales are becoming really, really popular. Um, they have... I would say decent accuracy um, because the load cells that they're built off of um, are, are fairly sensitive. The problem is uh, the display on them and repeatability and drift is becoming an issue. This is a, a Lyman Pocket Touch 1500. I could calibrate, uh, leave them sitting on the table, and then come back um, in a few minutes and the zero would drift on them horribly. Uh, and then I found out it was actually my ceiling fan causing it. Um, what I did end up, the other thing I noticed is the accuracy on this was questionable, uh, was very questionable. Um, I did 35 powder measures and with the, with the same casing and every one it was plus or minus uh i want to say 0.2 grains and oh, so that that's a half a grain from minimum to maximum shift in that weight in that measuring uh which is unacceptable to me unfortunately you know a half a grain uh could be the difference between a min and a max load uh, depending on which powder you're using. So what I ended up doing is I ended up uh, talking to a friend of mine uh, who deals with um, scientific measurements, and they made a recommendation of getting a gem scale. Um, you're not going to get the uh, capacity that you will on uh, some of these uh, purpose-built powder measures. Um, I think this one only goes up to maybe 75 grams worth. Um, so not quite as much. But the difference is this thing is accurate out to 0 0.01 grains and it has a repeatability of 0 0.02 grains. So, uh, two hundredths of a grain. Uh, and the reason why this is important to me um, is because I took a powder measure um, out of, uh, uh, you know, uh, out of a casing and put it onto the Lyman, uh, the Pocket Touch 1500, and it came out at 4.8 grains. And when I took that same uh, powder dump and put it onto my little gem scale, it turned out it was 4.73. So I'm not happy with the, uh, the Lyman's rounding on that. Uh, this one actually happens to be a Smartway uh, Gem 20. Um, but uh, 
The other thing I like about it is the aluminum uh, powder tray instead of this plastic. Uh, the plastic tends to be uh, much more staticky, uh, even though it's supposed to be anti-static. Uh, it's not. Um, or the aluminum um, scale pan for the for the for the gem scale. Uh, I actually have some anti-static spray that I put on it. Uh, you spray it in, wipe it down, wipe it off, nothing sticks. Um, the other thing I did was I also picked up a scale of a set of M1 grade uh, weights, uh, calibration weights. Uh, M1 are uh, supposed to be accurate to uh, 50 milligrams per kilogram, uh, plus or minus 50 milligrams per kilogram. Uh, uh, there were some um, additional modifications that I made to the press, and I apologize here. So one of the first things I did was the casing shell case feeder. Um, I actually took the second nut off of here, and I replaced it with this threaded nylon spacer. Um, I'll tell you that's one of the best things I did. Uh, the other thing is down here on the bottom, I have this uh, neoprene bonded washer. So it's metal with a layer of neoprene and a, uh, a wing nut on there. And with this um, threaded nylon insert that I picked up from the hardware store, this thing is rock solid. Um, I can loosen it up and, and tighten it down in a matter of seconds. This thing does not slip. So if I want to disconnect it, I can just crank off the wing nut and it pops right off. And this will not slide, so it will never lose its setting, um, which is absolutely wonderful. I don't know if you can see it, uh, but there is a gap visible in here, so I have no interference between the uh, between the slide feeder and the the spacer there. So that was the biggest uh, improvement to this thing. Um, Something else I had mentioned uh, in a previous video was for the bullet feeder. Uh, let me get my camera set back down here. The bullet feeder, I was going to get some Mylar washers to put in here. Uh, I actually did. I've got two. Um, I got one for the top side that is just barely larger than the screw post. Um, so I think it's a 3 16 and then I have a larger one on the underside, so it sandwiches it, um, that's a quarter inch. So they're two different sizes. So the screw is not digging into the lip in here. It's riding on those Mylar washers, and it moves um, fairly easily. There it goes. Click, click. Yeah, it, uh, it moves really nice. And there's, it's actually tight enough. There's no wobble in there, um, so that mylar, the mylar washers have paid off dividends. Um, the uh, fifteen hundred grit sandpaper that I have in the feed fingers and on the the little bullet shelf down here in the bullet feeder have been holding up absolutely wonderfully. Um, one of them is partially torn off because, again, the fingers I munched, I, I knocked it out of alignment and uh, crushed it halfway under the seating die, unfortunately. Um, and uh, here's actually the result of that. <laughs> I kind of split the bullet. So, but yeah, it, it crunched the fingers, so I have a new set of those on replacement. Um, so the primary purpose for this video today is the powder measure. 
Um, let me get this readjusted back up here. So I went, uh, I wasn't happy with the stock um, auto disc measures, uh, measuring discs, because they were, there was too much variance in them. Uh, from a 0.43 to a 0.46 measure, um, they, you know, I, I wanted something between those uh, in cc's just so that I could make sure that I could dial in the powder uh, a little bit more precise because, you know, I didn't want to jump from minimum on a powder load to a maximum on a powder load and not have any margin of safety in there. So uh, what I ended up doing, as you can see up here, I ended up buying uh, one of those variable, uh, the variable charge bar from Lee. Um, I actually bought two because, uh, well, there were some problems. Uh, let me drop this back into place here. And the problem, um, now I'm using uh, 0 0.5 cc's. Um, to start, uh, just to get uh, about five grains of uh, 231 powder. Now, in the Lee instructions, they actually have a warning right up here on the top that says um, coarse flake powders. Uh, red dot and green dot can give erratic charges when the charge bar is set smaller than 0.4 cc. Now, I'm not using smaller than 0.4 cc, and I'm using a ball powder. Um, you know, Winchester 231, that's a, well, it's supposed to be a ball powder. It's a flattened ball powder, so. But the problem I was running into is... A combination of the shape of the opening on this charge bar. Again, this is set to uh, 0.5 cc, according to the scale here and the and the micrometer dial on it. And you know, again, the uh, it was the shape of this, I guess, measuring gauge, and the other half of the problem is this. It's that wiper, uh, the elastomer wiper that they put on the bottom of the Autodesk Pro. And as you can see, it's uh, it's not, the opening isn't round. It's it's squared off on the top and the bottom. You know, so it's got a little bit more material to actually wipe off the excess powder. And uh, let's see if I can get my other picture here. Um, so here's a photo that I took of the inside. Um, not sure, hopefully you can see my mouse here. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn on highlight. So this red line is the downspout in the elastomer. And these are the lips. So let's turn on this. And let's adjust. So here's a better picture of what it's looking like. So you've got the elastomer coming across the top here and the bottom here. And the gray is the body of that variable charge bar. And that little black slot is all the gap left for the powder to get in to fill and my problem uh, was that the first fill would be full capacity next fill would be about half capacity next fill after that would be maybe 20 percent so i'm going from five grains to about two and a half to three grains, down to one and a half grains, down to empty, 65 
cases in a row, empty of all powder. And it's because the powder is basically just backing up in that little slot and it can't fill the charge bar. So my thought was uh, I would try getting a second one, uh, which I actually have a second one now, and modifying it. Um, let me go back here. So, yeah, I, I bought a second one of these, and I was going to modify it and fill this in, and so it would cause me to back out the, uh, the charge bar, open it up a little bit, you know, so it would slide a bit more under the elastomer and, and let it fill. But, um... I realized that uh, probably wouldn't be the best use of my time or money. Uh, and I actually found a solution that uh, impressed me a lot, uh, to the point where I will recommend this for any hand loader. There is a company called Custom Cast USA. Uh, and they sell this on eBay and through their website. It's like 13 bucks. And what it is, it is a custom resin cast blank charge disc. And as you can see, it's got these dimples in it and these holes around the outside. And what they do is the dimples are for you to drill your own uh, powder measure holes uh, and they give you a chart that says this size drill bit generates a, a volume of so many cc's. Uh, the little dimples are uh, uh, starting points for the bit and you just drill it out the size you want and then the holes around the side are tapped Allen set screws. And so what you do is you get that hole as close to the size you need and then you use the set screw to reduce the volume just enough so you get exactly what you're after. Now, this, um, the guy who came up with this, this is absolutely genius. Um, if you notice how shiny mine is, uh, from the light reflecting off it. I actually lapped the top surface uh, again with some 1500 wet dry sandpaper just so that it would be a smoother surface for the elastomer wiper in here. Um, the other thing that I did uh, is the set screws um, they are quarter 28 fine thread uh, with an eighth inch uh, Allen uh, socket in them, but I don't know if you can see it. This is the set screw that came with it. Uh, it is quarter inch, maybe. Uh, and the problem I had was, as you can see, quarter inch, uh, there's not a whole lot of lip there on this thing. So to tighten it down, it would have fallen right in. So what I did was I went back to the hardware store and I picked up some half inch long um, set screws so that I would have a little bit more adjustment in and out. Uh, again, these are uh, resin cast. They are very, very well done. Um, the thing about resin cast is that when you cut threads into this resin, they are very, very crisp, so you really don't want to adjust this set screw in or out a whole lot uh, because it will loosen up over time. The, the way to get around that is you can actually use uh, nylon set screws if you can find them. Oh, this one's magnetic. Oy. So, but uh, the easiest thing I could say is pick a drill bit that is just slightly over the volume you're after, put a longer set screw in, tighten it down, and then just slowly back it out to increase the powder. 
Um, but this is what I've been using. Uh, I have not re-dialed in the set screw since I changed it, uh, which is my intent. But uh, now I have a pre-drilled powder measure hole. Max volume is, I think, like 0.53 cc's, uh, which should be well over what I need uh, for Winchester 231. Um, but with that set screw, it allows me to drop that volume down and then slowly increase. And that I have every intention of doing. Um, other than that, uh, I think I have uh, a couple more mods on the way. Um, one of them was going to be for powder check. Um, a lot of people will put a little mirror and lights and stuff off of here. And I think I found a, I don't know, a novel way of doing this for maybe a little bit less cost. You know, the, the LED lights or even some of the cheap uh, LED light strips and a mirror to clamp on here. I don't know if I could use a magnetic mount or not. Um, but uh, the problem also is that if you're using a mirror to check your powder level, you got to be looking at the right angle to see. And I think I have a way around that, and uh, I will find out here in the next couple weeks. Um, but uh, I am going to go ahead and reassemble my uh, powder measure and get this uh, set screw dialed in again. And hopefully I'll be pushing, you know, five grains uh, of 231 here in my uh, my 40 Smith & Wesson. And, oh yes, hopefully for my next video, I will finally have uh, what I call my unicorn. Um, I managed to find a threaded 40 Smith & Wesson barrel for... A particular gun that has not been manufactured in over 10 years and uh, rare enough as they are. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing reassembled and uh, happy reloading.